Hi hey there, welcome to the second session in the technology workshop that we're uh, hosting here at uh, Informs 2021. My name is Adam Christensen. Uh, I am going to be talking a little bit about a new API tool that we've been working on at GAMS called GAMS Transfer. Uh, it, GAMS Transfer is a uh, what we're calling as a unified system to move data in and out of a GAMS environment. So uh, all this work is being uh, jointly done with my colleagues Atharv and Rinka. So we've heard from uh, our customers as well as just from our own experience that uh, if we're going to be self-reflective a little bit about GAMS, that we should make this uh, we should make it easier to move data in and out of a GAMS environment. Uh, this is something that uh, we have a lot of tools. Uh, in order to, to do, but uh, perhaps uh, it could be easier uh, and that a lot of users, you know, just want the data and access to it instead of having to make a lot of decisions about the shape and structure of the data before actually getting it. So we are going to take this on as a challenge in order to make a tool that will allow users to get quick access to the data. Uh, this new tool, GAMS Transfer, is going to leverage open source uh, data science tools because they're powerful and popular. Uh, and you know, while we're at it, we should think about uh, syntax and highlighting the user experience a lot more. So um, this new tool should harmonize syntax across a bunch of different environments, uh, not just between Python environments, let's say between Jupyter or embedded Python or regular Python is if you're scripting, but it should also harmonize uh, syntax across other pl um, platforms and, and, and environments like MATLAB or R, et cetera. So uh, all of this uh, should be packaged up in a way that convenient functions allow uh, kind of these environment specific data conversions to be done easily by the user. And of course, all of this has to perform, uh, but perhaps not at all costs. So we are looking to put uh, performance on an equal pedestal, or excuse me, the uh, user experience on an equal pedestal with performance in this case. So, so what exactly is it? GAMS transfer is an, it's an API. It's not a command line tool like GDX dump or G, uh, GDX XRW. Uh, it's it's a, a part of us. It'll be part of a scripting uh, a workflow. Um, and it connects to both GDX and GMD based uh, GAMS objects. So uh, the GMD object will be available only in the Python because we only have an embedded Python kind of dynamic, but uh, the GDX connectivity will exist for MATLAB, uh, MATLAB Octave, and R, and perhaps even others. Uh, both the Python and the MATLAB um, versions are going to be released with GAMS 37. So thinking about uh, GAMS transfer and, and going back to kind of square one, uh, we wanted to focus on uh, kind of a unified design philosophy. So if we think about a, a GDX file as a, as a container for data, we are kind of mirroring that, uh, that philosophy in this new tool. And we actually call the main uh, container in the main object that holds the data, a container. So this exists in both the Python and MATLAB environments. Uh, symbol objects are then created and added to the container. So a symbol object contains both metadata as well as the actual record data, so the numeric data. Uh, the nice thing about this object-oriented structure is that symbol objects in the container can all, uh, all be linked together through domain information. So you can pass uh, domain objects through and link symbols together. So you can link symbols uh, or sets together, uh, creating subsets and et cetera. So uh, this allows some interesting you know, on the fly de debugging and domain violation detection, uh, implicit set growth and other kind of more uh, ga some GAMS like things, but inside of a, uh, a convenient data environment. So. Uh, the symbols that have records have all been standardized into a format that uh, is convenient to use in each of the different environments. So Python uses a pandas data frame or, or NumPy arrays as the base uh, standardized format. 
And MATLAB leverages convenient MATLAB uh, structures. So uh, something called a structure or a struct uh, table and both dense and sparse matrices are available in MATLAB. Python also has uh, the ability to convert uh, the pandas data frames uh, data structure into a, into a matrix um, or a NumPy array. So the, the standardized formats here allow us to leverage a lot of different IO tools. Uh, we can connect data from a bunch of different uh, um, starting points, so CSV files, Excel files, et cetera. All of this is made really fast when reading and writing with C++ or C power calls. Uh, and then the uh, kind of the last point I want to make about this design philosophy is that the container is the thing that actually owns the bulk read and write methods. So there's no such thing as necessarily writing a single symbol to a file. We're, we're writing an entire container. Now, there might only be a single symbol in a container, but uh, the container is the thing that you're actually moving around, not necessarily individual symbols. So an example workflow might be that you create a container from a GDX file. Uh, when you do this, the instantiation goes through the GDX file and gets a lot of it gets all the metadata of all the different symbols. But reading the actual record data is left up to the user. Uh, if you've got a really large symbol and you only want to load one, you can do that. So you then might want to go and read that symbol data, and you can access <clears throat> the records and the data structures through the dot records attribute. Uh, from there, you can do any a number of different convenient data transformations. Um, I've listed a few here that are common in pandas. Uh, so group by is able to you know, aggregate data, uh, pivot, form pivot tables, melting things down. These are all really standard and performant kind of data transformation methods uh, that are available. And then you can take all of that new data or the transformed data and export it either to a visualization or some other data endpoint like a SQL database or something like that. Also through pandas, uh, all, all part of the standard IO tools that they have. Uh, the, an example of write workflow might be that we use uh, either MATLAB or in this case, pandas IO tools to read in data from an Excel file, CSV, SQL, uh, some sort of starting point there. Uh, and then the user might be doing, again, some data transformations. Uh, and then that's still on the pandas and kind of the Python side, but we go, go uh, quickly into the GAMS transfer side where we create the container and create a symbol object that is then added to the container. Um, when the user has read in all of this information, they have a bunch of different pandas data frames that are uh, now in memory. And you can use this convenient function, the dot set records uh, convenience function to add the records directly to the symbol object that now exists in the container. Uh, GAMS transfer also contains some debugging features. So there's the is valid uh, check. It'll go th uh, those two methods, is valid and check, um, are kind of related, but they allow users to debug uh, what their data um, what their data contains. It, it checks for domain violations, makes sure, make, make sure that the columns are of the right data type um, and a number of other things. And once you've got data that's valid, you can go ahead and write the container to a file or something in memory. So those, uh, uh, so those are just kind of the basic de design philosophies. Um, don't have a ton more to uh, talk about in these slides, but I wanna get to a, a live demo here in just a second. And then I'll be interested to hear that Q&A uh, afterwards. But just a quick summary slide before I go into the li uh, live demo is that Games Transfer is a data only API. It's not a model API. We still have the object oriented APIs that we're going to offer and support that do more than what GAMS Transfer does. The GAMS Transfer is really just focused on moving data in and out of GAMS. Uh, we heard that we heard from our users that really they just want the data. And so we tried to make this uh, follow that philosophy where we just get the data quickly 
and then allow users to kind of transform it the way, in ways that they want. So read and write bulk calls and better structural integration were a lot of the things we focused on. Um, the new state aware kind of container structure enables a lot of nice functionality uh, to do GAMS like things, uh, but in a in a environment that's a little bit more data centric rather than model centric like GAMS is. So I think anybody that's interested in moving data around uh, between environments uh, will be interested in GAMS transfer. So I hope that you give it a shot. So just a quick demo. Uh, I will move to uh, a screen here that, um, let's see, pull this up. So what I would like to do is just read in our kind of famous transport model. So uh, what I've done before starting this video is uh, created a transport GDX file. You can see here, if you just do a GDX dump, it just contains all the standard data from the solve of the transport model. So what I'm going to do now is just read in the GDX file that was output from that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and import my GAMS transfer packages here. The syntax will change when we get it into the actual distribution. So um, don't hold me too tightly to this uh, from SRC import star, but it'll be something similar. It'll be a kind of from GAMS transfer import star into this. So uh, I want to go ahead and create a container from the transport GDX. And so now I've gone ahead and, and done that. And I can see that uh, my container has symbols in it. Uh, it's, so it's aware of all of the different symbols that are in, in the transport GDX file, but it has none of the records in it. So uh, m.data, the data attribute, is actually where everything is stored. So it's a dictionary, a Python dictionary of all the different uh, uh, symbol objects. So just to be clear about this, let's go ahead and load in set i, and I can look at the records attribute, and we can see that it's empty right now because I haven't loaded anything. So if I just do m.read without any anything else, the default is to just read in everything. So I can go through and now read in um, or look at the records for set i, and I can see that I have a uh, have my records as well as the element text that belongs to the set as a data frame that is now available for for the users to use uh, in their own uh, in their own work. What's nice about loading all these things into data frames is that we can do some nice things like uh, we can describe the parameters. Let's say so much like a, a describe function operates on. Uh, uh, pandas data frame to describe the kind of summary statistics of of the actual data frame. You can do this and get a summary uh, of all of the different parameters in the in the data uh, and some summary, some simple summary statistics. So um, this is kind of a convenient function to or convenient method to get get at uh, data quality issues and debug your own data. So there are other Describe features in here, which unfortunately I don't have enough time to discuss at the moment. So that would be the read functionality of GAMS transfer. I just want to go ahead and show real fast how you can go ahead and write uh, data to to a GDX file. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the same uh, importing here. <laughs> this time I'm going to uh, create just an empty. Uh, container. So m.data uh, has a universe set in it, but that universe set uh, nothing in it. So it's just an empty data frame. It's just a placeholder. So the way that I create a, a set in GAMS transfer is I can create the, I use the set uh, object constructor uh, here, and I pass it this m uh, pass it a link or a reference to the container that I'm now working with. Uh, the J is the, the string here is the actual name in the GDX file that'll get created. And then the records, of course, are convenient uh, Python formats. It can be also 
some um, pandas data frames, and then there's also the kind of descriptions uh, that you can attach to all the metadata. So in this case, I'm using uh, the J equals this set object. So I'm actually creating a, a, uh, an object, a symbol object called J in this case. So J exists by itself as well as within the container, but they're, they're linked together. So J records, you can see that the set elements of J are New York, Chicago, Topeka, just like we would have in, in a GAMS model. So what I'm going to do now is just, uh, I'm not going to recreate the entire transport GDX file. I'm going to just create a parameter called B that doesn't have anything in it because I've left that argument out. So pretend for a moment that you've read in data from a CSV file that uh, using some pandas IO tools, and you've ended up with um, the market and demand information as well as some extra stuff because you've read it in from a, uh, a file that has more than just the demand data in it. So uh, you wanna take this, these two columns, uh, the market and the demand quantities here, and move it into the container. It's pretty easy to use the slicing features in pandas to do this and the set records uh, functionality in GAMS transfer. So I wanna set the records of the object B to, can, uh, to include just the market and demand columns here. So now I can do B records and it's made, uh, it's standardized to the data. You can note, you note that it changed the column, column uh, headings as, as well as standardizing the actual um, data types. So data types here, we can see that we have uh, very specific uh, information and then uh, very specific data types. So we use categoricals throughout our base types to do a lot of the linking or to enable a lot of the linking. If I want to go ahead and just write out this file, I just simply do m.write and then out to a GDX file. And that's, that's it. So just to uh, show you what that file looks like from GDX dumps perspective, uh, I'll just look at out.gdx and you can see that I've created a set with the that's a subset of the universe and a parameter B, which is a subset of J. And uh, it was created in with as I think as, as little pain as possible. Um, hopefully you guys feel the same way. Uh, I'm looking very much uh, to hearing some feedback. Uh, this is still a in development kind of product. And although a lot of the design philosophy is kind of set, but we're always looking at other ideas and, and ways to improve things. So I'm um, looking forward to Q&A and yes, thank you very much.